there's two things that can happen after prostate cancer treatments to the penis itself. Sometimes men notice that there's more uh, bend in the penis. It's called peronies. So there's a higher incidence of developing peronies, which means that the penis bends up or to the side and, or has a bit of a kink in it, and it wasn't there prior to treatments. And sometimes if it's a mild bend, we can use um, adaptive methods of sexual activity to help with that. But other times there needs to be treatment for peronies. And you need to see your urologist around those treatments. It may be injections, it may be surgery, but sometimes the peronies is self-limiting and it will go away. But just so you're aware that that may occur after prostate cancer treatments, particularly radical prostatectomy. The other thing is um, after radical prostatectomy, men may be concerned that the penis feels shorter. And if you have good penile rehab after, the, after your surgery, in, in other words, if you try to obtain erections somehow, whether they're for sexual purposes or not, you tend to keep that penile length a bit more. So um, using the pills, injection, self-stimulating, using the vacuum device, something to create erections more often tends to keep the architecture of the penis, all the little, uh, you know, elasticity of the penis at its best and tries to prevent that shortening. Some people even use what we call penile extenders to actually extend the penis and keep it lengthened so that the penis doesn't shorten much. In general, the shortening is very small and mild, and sometimes if you put on some weight, especially tummy weight, the penis even looks shorter even though it's not. So that's something that you could talk to your doctor or urologist about too. Sometimes after prostate cancer treatments, you'll notice that there's a bit of leakage of urine when you don't want it. So when you get sexually aroused or when you reach orgasm, there might be some urine loss. Typically about three to six months after surgery, you should be continent or pretty continent. But some men around sexual activity notice that as soon as they get aroused, there's a slight bit of urine released. Or when they get highly aroused, they get panicky because they're getting close to orgasm and they think some urine might leak. Or even at orgasm, there's a release of urine and we call that climacteria. And there's methods to try to prevent that. The first type where you just have a sexual thought and a little bit of urinary leakage is harder to treat. But pelvic floor therapy, bands around the base of the penis um, when you're being sexual can sometimes help with that climacteria. Men that are on androgen deprivation therapy where your testosterone is pushed down to castrate levels can have all sorts of things that affect their sexuality. Because testosterone is so low, it's much more difficult to get an erection. Your libido might be down very low, that you're not that, that interested. And sometimes it's much harder to reach orgasm. So ADT can also affect your energy, your, you know, your mood can be a lot lower. Um, all sorts of things are affected by ADT. So we incorporate that as part of your, se of your sexuality. So it's not just about how your penis functions or orgasm, it's about how are you gonna manage your overall sexuality with your bladder, your mobility, your fatigue, depression. All those things are incorporated in proper sexual uh, health counseling around prostate cancer treatments. And one of the things that some men tell me um, when they are on ADT is that they don't have the sexual drive that they had before, and yet they still want to maintain the intimacy with their partners, maintain that connection. So they think, maybe if I have an erection and we can start being sexual or with penetrative activities, that that'll somehow keep that connection, but I don't have any sexual drive. So there's a disconnect between what the penis is doing and what the mind feels. So yes, you can do an injection or a vacuum device and create an erection, but it's sort of like it's not associated. So one of the things that the sexual health nursing and counseling can help with is how do you as a couple put that back together? How do you associate the penis again with being part of your body and putting it back together even when your drive is low? Other men and other couples decide that 
Mm, they don't really feel like being that sexual. They have a nice relationship, good communication, lots of wonderful things. They survived the cancer. You know, things are good and they don't necessarily need to be sexual. And that's totally okay. Just, I just want people to know that if they need help around libido or sex drive, erections, ejaculatory changes, orgasmic uh, changes, things to do with the penile length or bending, communication with a partner, um, adapting to all these things, grieving of the loss of your sexual function that you had before, that there is help available.